Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and today I'm going to show you texting on the iPhone. Now here's the AT&T iPhone, here's a Verizon iPhone, and they are identical as far as texting is concerned. I know there's been a lot of questions uh, to me personally about that, so I thought I'd cover that. So texting's identical, the, the icon's in the same place, so I'm not going to show you on Verizon just because I don't have a lot of text messages on that. So that said, let me move the Verizon phone out of the way. And let's bring into focus the AT&T phone, just to give you an idea how texting works. So first, let's take a look at the settings for texting. So we go into settings, and we go down to messaging, or messages. We have the option to show a preview, which means when it pops up on your screen, you'll see a preview of the message. Uh, when you get a, a text message, it actually brings up an alert right in the center. Repeat alert, and it says if you ignore it, it will repeat, it will alert you twice if you don't answer it or acknowledge that it's there. MMS messaging, so that's multimedia, so meaning pictures or video messaging. Group messaging, or to multiple people. There's also an option for a subject field and a character count. And that's pretty much it. So let's go into the messaging itself. Here's the messaging app. This is my, my wife and some friends here. And... Let's go into, uh, we'll go to my brother's here, and we tap in this box to bring up the keyboard. We can type on this either in portrait or landscape. We'll shift, and depending on how we'd like to type, we can type. The only problem with landscape is that it's difficult to see the message, so you kind of find you go back to portrait in order to actually use it. We can message multiple people at once, and we can do that by creating a text message by pushing this button in the upper right here. And we can hit the plus button, which allows us to choose our contacts, brings up our contact list. So let's go ahead and uh, just pick this person, and let's pick this person. And so you can see it's starting to bring in multiple people. We simply tap in here, type our test me text message, and hit send. It will go to those people at once. We'll go ahead and cancel that. So we can also send picture and video. So to do that, we bring up our text again. And we have uh, this little camera in the upper or the middle left here. If we hit this, we can take a photo, or we can choose an existing. Let's go ahead and take a photo. We'll just take a quick one, uh, just to give you an idea. It opens the photo app. We'll take a picture. We'll hit use, or we can hit retake if we don't like that. Come on, there we go. It'll take a second. It places it in here, and we can also place some text along with it and hit send. That can be photo or video, and you can choose from your pre-existing uh, photos or video. So let's go ahead and show you the messaging or the keyboard for the messaging. And here's a normal keyboard layout. We have a couple options. Uh, we can hit this one, two, three button, and that will bring us into the number pad with some uh, symbols such as the dollar sign, exclamation point. If we hit this button here, we get some more symbols such as pound sign, things like that. So that's how we switch between them pretty easily. So let's go ahead and show you some typing. I have some very big hands, so this should be a good example. Uh, we'll say, hello, how are you today? So, And you can see that's messed up. Because it was so far away from what a real word would be, it's going to be very difficult to determine. But if we tap on that, we can select it. And we can hit replace. And it tries to its best to guess what you were typing. Since I don't want any of those, I just hit the backspace. And we will start and say today again. So there's typing on it. Um, let's go ahead and delete. Now, if we want to, uh, we made a mistake in the middle and we want to uh, get to the middle, we can tap, tap and hold to highlight where we want to bring the cursor. Stop. We can select, select all, paste, and so on. It's pretty self explanatory. So the autocorrect does a pretty good job, but let me try it again and say, whoa, or are you today. So you can see it went pretty quick. I messed up here again. We can hit A-R-E. Um, and if we see how I, I typed the wrong word purposely and it brought up hue as a replacement instead of H-U-W, um, I really wanted to leave H-U-W and to do that, see it's got a little X here, 
tap on the X and it goes away. We actually have the option to turn the autocorrect off for the whole iPhone within the settings if you want to do that. Uh, but if you like the autocorrect and you get used to it, you learn to trust it. It actually turns out pretty well, except for the few annoyances where it tries to autocorrect words like NP at first for no problem. But now that it knows I like that since I've hit the X once on that, um, it knows that I want NP for no problem. So it, it kind of learns what you do as well. So uh, there is some learning curve to it, but I think once you just learn to trust it and go as fast as you can, you'll be pretty happy with it. So the next thing I wanted to show you is how to search a text. You have all these messages here. If you scroll down just a little bit above your message, you have search, and you can search for any word, and it will pull up the text. And let's go ahead and say hello. And all of these people I said the word hello to. And so it works pretty well. We have some options to actually delete each individual conversation or messages within the text and some other options as well. If we want to delete an entire conversation, we can do that by either swiping to the right and hitting delete, or we can hit edit at the top and hit the little minus button, hit delete. That will get rid of our conversation if we don't want it there anymore. Now, the other thing we can do is go into a text message here, scroll all the way to the top, and we have some other messages, call, FaceTime, contact, load earlier messages. We can lo keep loading earlier messages, and that works fine. Uh, we can also delete individual messages within here. So, so um, this one says, I saw a Chevy Volt on my way to work, which I did. If I want to delete that, I can tap on that, hit delete. I can also forward it. I can forward it. Let's wait for it here. There we go. We can forward it to other people if we want to forward that message in particular. Uh, I, pretend, I, I tend to use the uh, copy-paste feature for that. So some nice little features within the texting. We also have um, a couple more things that I wanted to talk about regarding texting that this does not offer. It does not offer emoticons, at least not out of the box. There's some apps that will help you enable those or emoji. I believe it's called Icons for Japan. Uh, there's some applications, and some of you may know those applications, and if you do, please post them in the comments below, because I'm actually not that familiar with all the texting applications that may be even better than the default one here, as far as emoticons and things like that. So if you want to suggest that, I'd appreciate that. There's also a couple other things I want to tell you is, first of all, some people may be concerned about losing their texts. I know that when I upgrade my iPhone from like an, an iPhone 3GS to an iPhone 4, I don't want to lose all my text messages because sometimes they have valuable information in here. It's just nice and easy to go in and say, hey, I talked to this person, let's go in, tap on them. Instead of going in and having to do this all over again, it may be minor to you, uh, but it, it's nice to have them all here and who you talked to before. So when you back up to iTunes it actually saves all this information in iTunes and when you restore your phone you don't lose this information it saves all of this information so that's a really nice feature I just thought I'd mention that and lastly there are programs out there to retrieve this data off your phone and save it locally to your hard drive uh, for use later or and I don't mean in the backup, I mean to extract it from that backup. So there's some information to do that, or some programs to do that, rather, to pull your data out of here and search that. Now, there are a bunch of programs that do that, depending on whether you're on a Mac or Windows computer or, uh, I believe, even Linux. So you'll want to look into those for your individual needs. And again, if you know of any of those programs, please suggest them in the comments and help anybody out here that uh, may be looking. But uh, other than that, I think that pretty much covers all the messaging. If you have any other questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment again. And if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it if you do. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.